This is a workout for beginner level and it's a high intensity interval for a beginner. And so I want you to have your safety strap on, start your treadmill and bring it to a pace that you're comfortable to warm up at. Um, I'm going to choose for today's workout a walking pace of two miles an hour. Actually, maybe even get comfortable for as much as 2.5. So that's going to be the big base pace that I'm going to come back to every time. But please take the pace that you feel comfortable going, oh yeah, that's a really comfortable pace because that's where we're coming back to in between our high intensity. We get a nice five minute warm up here. Again, if you're not yet comfortable letting go of both hands, you can, by all means, start with holding on. Maybe even just encouraging the movement through the shoulders. That would mimic what would happen when you're doing your arm swing. And for the next 30 seconds, starting in five, four, three, two. We're going to let go of one hand. Good. And you'll notice that the left hand comes forward with the right foot every time. Good. Now, by all means, if you're already comfortable walking without holding on, then that's where you should be working at. at. It's a very healthy thing to do. Stay long through your spine. Now, if you've been um, Letting go of just the one hand, then please switch over to the other for the next 30 seconds. And you'll notice the movement isn't so much of the arm, but it's the rotation of the thorax, or really the shoulder girdle, and the pelvic girdle working in opposite directions. Good, if you gently need to hold on for a little while, do so. Or if you feel comfortable, now letting go with both. We have three more minutes of our warm-up. Keep thinking long and tall. Hopefully you have set up your iPad or your, whatever you're looking at this workout from in a position that allows you to keep your posture nice and tall and keep you safe on the treadmill. Maybe this is a good time to start exaggerating your push off. So really feel the pushing off through the whole foot. Good. Good. Next, I want you to just relax your body again. You don't have to put a lot of mindfulness to anything for the next 10 or 15 seconds. Now, one thing that we're going to do as we increase the pace in two minutes time is we're going to be wanting to walk faster. It doesn't mean you have to move your legs faster, but it might mean that you take a longer stride. So one way of helping you take a longer stride is to focus on the action of your gluteus maximus. So really pushing off, making your leg longer behind you. And you'll see when we increase the pace of the treadmill that you're going to go, wow, that makes it so much easier by making that longer. When you do it and you're keeping the pace the same, it almost makes you feel like you're walking slower. So just get the feeling for that. Great. And then we have one last minute of our warm up. And during this time, I want you to think about so at least the next 10 or 15 seconds of lifting your feet a little bit more as you come through. Good. All right, in 30 seconds time, we're going to increase our pace and we're going to increase it for 20 seconds. If you're not comfortable increasing it for 20 seconds, start with 10 seconds. That's okay. So if your base pace is 
we're going to aim to increase the pace maybe to about 2.8 or 2.9. If your base pace was 2, make your speed go up to 2.4 or 2.5. All right, and go. So remember what we're doing, we're taking a nice longer step, but nice and tight behind us on the leg that is pushing back. Good, whether you're using one arm or both, you work your arms with the legs, three, two, one, and slow it back down. Good job. Back to your base pace, get yourself comfortable. You're here for two minutes. And again, whether you're, you know, if you're still uncomfortable with letting go, nice opportunity to just, over these two minutes, one arm, then the other arm. Relax your shoulders. Good. Okay, we are going to increase our speed on three, two, and one. If you're comfortable at the last speed, go for that one. If you felt like it was a bit slow, go a little bit faster. I've chosen to go at 3.4. I might go, oh gosh, that's a little faster than I thought. I bring it down a little bit, that's okay, we're almost done. Two and one and bring yourself back to your base pace. Good job. This is your two minutes of Getting your heart rate back down a little bit, getting your breathing comfortable. Just thinking about your posture and alignment. Right, in 30 seconds time, we are going to increase our pace again. Again, looking to increase it for 20 seconds. If the pace that you followed with me the last time was comfortable, then go back to your 3.3, 3.4. Otherwise, this time we're gonna to try to go a little bit faster. Okay, get ready and bring it up. We're going to 3.7. Just a few more seconds. Five, four, three, two, and bring it down. Good, bring it back to your base pace. Nice and easy. Again, if your base pace was 2.0, obviously your speeds won't be as high. Just make sure you feel in control the whole time. Just have one more speed to do.
Remember to relax your shoulders. Even if you're holding on, just let everything relax in between. Nice long push-offs. Okay, we have 30 seconds more at this pace. And I'm going to do our last high intensity interval. Please bring it to a pace that's comfortable for you, where you feel like you're working hard, but you feel safe and you feel challenged. Good, let's. Get ready to start turning it up, and let's bring it up. So I've taken it to 3.9, because after this, I start running. My legs are very long, and that's about the fastest walking pace that's good for me. Good. Three, two, one, and bring it right back. Back to your base pace. Good job. And we're just going to cool down from here. Five minutes. So many times I see people to finish their workout and they're still breathing hard and they just stop. They stop the treadmill. And that is actually the way Jim Fix, who some of you might know from the 60s and 70s, he'd written a book on how to beat heart disease through running. And he was actually um, going for a run, stopped at a red light and stopped as opposed to continuing to run on the spot. And he had a massive heart attack at that time. And so when we're running and walking and, and doing this beautiful exchange of blood, our heart beats faster, which is great. But then what happens is that blood going down to the leg is pumped back to the heart by the action of the calf and even more important, the soleus or the muscle behind the calf muscle. So it's a give and take. It's just a nice exchange all the time. But if you stop suddenly, the heart is still beating fast, but there's no pump bring the return of the blood to the heart. And so if you have any vascular insufficiency or clogging of the arteries in your heart, that is a really dangerous time to just stop. And so it's really important to always invite a cool down. Now, if you find that you're, you're going, Wow, I'm breathing a lot harder than I thought. You know, depending on your cardiovascular fitness level, how fit you are, and how often you bring your heart rate up, you might find that you're not cooling down enough at your base pace. And so by all means, just bring it down even slower, because I really want you to feel like you're breathing at a really comfortable level when you get off the treadmill, that if you're going to take your pulse, you go, Oh, it feels almost like my resting pulse. It won't be as low, but certainly it would be below 100 beats per minute. And so you just want to ensure that it's really comfortable for you and that you are, um, are able to actually get a, a nice cool down. This is also by bringing your pace down from your base pace. If you've been holding on at all, it's a nice opportunity for you to, you know, be at a slow enough pace that you might feel comfortable letting go. It's a great way to work on your balance and stability.
recognizing as well that when we are on the treadmill, just like when we're walking outside, head turns can impact your balance. And so, you know, should somebody come into the room you're working out and you turn your head, you may lose your balance. So make sure that you're just practicing your head turns ever so gently so that you are ready and you recognize how your body is reacting on the treadmill belt. Because you have probably a few inches on either side of where your feet are walking. So these are all little things that are going to allow you to progress and I hope you had fun with today's high intensity interval training for beginners. I enjoyed doing this with you and again the pace is all under your control. Keep your grade at zero percent. Document what you're doing so that you can see your progress because if you are consistent with this you will progress. I do not recommend that you do a high intensity interval training every day. It is a workout that you might choose to incorporate once or twice a week. Maybe, you know, split it up by three or four days. So as a great accompaniment to your treadmill workouts, I've created a beginner strength workout for you that you can find here. And with that, I wish you a great day.